In this InDesign tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create a simple brochure. If you'd like to follow along, make sure you download and use these four assets here. You should have a blurb document, photo of some dogs, photo of a forest, and a photo of a tent in the snow. First thing we'll do is open up InDesign. When InDesign opens, go over to the Create New button and click. And this new page here is InDesign's templates. You can click up the top to choose different templates. And you can also go over to the right side here and plug in your own dimensions. I'll be using an A4 template today, so I'm going to click View All Presets. Locate A4, and when I click, automatically the measurements over here are updated. Now these measurements are set in a different increment. This is set to Pickers. Click this and change it to Millimeters. And now you'll see that we have 210 millimeters by 297. You can also change the orientation of your document to be portrait or landscape. We'll keep ours at portrait. Change the file name, and I'll call this Aurora Brochure, and then click the Create button. This is the InDesign layout. You'll see that we have our blank page here, and our blank page also has this purplish pink border. This is just a margin set in the margins and guides, and this isn't going to be in the final document. This is just a visual guide, so when you're placing content, to be careful to not go past this, or you might run the risk of your image or text getting cut off. The first example I'll show you is how to just put in a colored square. If you go over to the left here and choose your rectangle tool, or M for keyboard shortcut, you'll notice your mouse turns into a crosshair. Click and drag a box, and now whenever you do an element like this, if you wanna make changes to that element, I always recommend going up and choosing your arrow tool. This arrow tool helps you select and change and modify each object. If I click to the right over in this gray area, you'll notice that my box becomes unselected. To select it again, I move my mouse over and click. A selected object changes by getting these small white boxes on the outside and sides. Using my arrow tool, I can click and drag to change the size and proportions of the box. If I want to rotate this object, I move my mouse to the corner just outside the little handle and you'll see that I get a curved arrow. Click and drag and you can rotate your object. If you want to undo it any time, if you want to undo it any time, hit Command Z on Mac or Control Z on PC. Or you can go up to the top menu and click Edit, Undo or Redo. I'll show you how to apply some color to this box. If you don't have your swatches palette over here on the right side, Click up on Window, choose Color, and click Swatches. Swatches palette appears, and if this ever disappears, you can always click this button here to reveal or hide it. Swatches work simply in that we have these pre-booked in colors, and we can apply these colors to any object in InDesign. Now something to note is these two squares here. The top one refers to the inside color, the fill. So while this box is on top, I'll click the blue color, and you'll notice that my box gets filled. Now there's a border on this box indicated by this black border box underneath here. But I need to make that border a little bit thicker so that we can see it. So with your box selected, over here in the properties, we can change the stroke. If I change this to make it larger, you'll notice that my border or stroke around my box becomes larger. Now to change the color of that border, if I keep clicking these colors, these are only changing the inside fill color. So I actually have to click on this border square and you'll notice that now my border box is now above this fill box. Now I can change that border. So if you're having trouble changing the border or the fill, make sure that you have your border on top or your fill on top. It's a very small detail to notice, but it's very important. Copying in InDesign is easy. You can right click on an object and choose copy and then right click and paste and you have a second object. Let's change the color of this to be pink on the fill and yellow for the border. And now you'll notice already with InDesign, it works with a layering structure. New objects appear over previous objects. But say I wanted this pink square to be underneath the blue square. No amount of moving it can fix that. So you need to right click on the object, choose a range, and choose send to back. And you'll notice that InDesign throws that pink square underneath the blue one. If I had multiple objects, say I wanted this red square to be underneath all of these objects, I can right click, and choose send to back, and it will move it underneath all of them. Or if I undo, say I wanted it to go back just one square. I right click, choose a range, 
and choose Send Backward, and it'll send back one layer. To delete an object, click on it so that it's selected and hit Delete. If you want to adjust the colors that are in your swatches, you can add in a new swatch by clicking this New Swatch button, and you'll notice that a new swatch appears down here. Double click on the swatch square to bring up modifiers, and here you can adjust all of the four colors in the CMYK range to change the color. You can also type in the CMYK ratings if you want a specific color, and you can also change it to be RGB. So I'll delete this square and start with a fresh layout. And it's a good point now to save your document. Click File, Save, and I'm going to save my document into my InDesign Assets folder where all of my photos are. You'll notice that here is the blurb, the dogs, forest and tent imagery. We want to save our document in there to be with the images. The next step we'll do is place in a photo. We're going to choose the frame tool, which is F for keyboard shortcuts. And again, click and drag. And you'll notice the difference here is this frame tool now has an X in the middle. And that's saying that it's awaiting content or awaiting an image to be within the frame. Whenever you're placing an image in a frame, you need to make sure that the frame is selected. And that's indicated by these little white squares on the border. If it's not selected, that means you may have chosen your arrow and click somewhere else in your document. So to reselect your box, Click on your arrow tool and click once on your box and you'll notice that you get the white squares. Now choose File, Place. The first image I'll choose is the dog's image. Click once and click Open. If you have a pop-up, you can click Remind Me Later. So now we have our dog photo within the frame, but you can see that it's not zoomed correctly and we're going to have a little bit of work here to make it fit. The first thing we'll do though is I'll show you how a frame works. Using your arrow tool on the top left, you can grab any of these white box handles on the outside and change the frame size. So think of this like changing a picture frame. Instead of changing the picture size inside, you're actually changing the outside frame measurements. So it's a way in InDesign you can actually crop a photo freely and easily without affecting the original image. Now you might notice that our image is a little bit pixelated. Our original image is high quality, but InDesign is giving us a lower quality version just so that InDesign works a lot faster. If you want to change that, right click on the image, Choose Display Performance and change it to High Quality Display. You can see now that our image is represented high quality. If you choose High Quality Display and your image is still pixelated, that means your original image is lower quality, and I recommend using high quality images in InDesign. So to show you how the frame works, I'm going to click and hold on this circle in the middle and wait for one second, and you'll notice that my whole image appears, and now I'm free to move my image around within the frame. Click and hold, and I can move my image. But say I'd like to fit my image within this frame. To do that, you can double click anywhere outside of this little circle and within the frame. Double click, and you'll notice now that our blue border has disappeared and now we have an orange border. But you can see that it's much bigger than my view. So to zoom, use Control plus or minus, or Command plus and minus on Mac, or you can hold Alt and scroll on your mouse. If I zoom all the way out, you can see that my photo is really large and actually much bigger than my page. So if I click and drag it, you can see that my image is appearing around there. So I'd like to shrink down my image so it fits within the frame. You can see that we have the white square handles on the outside, just like for the frame. So to shrink down my image, I click on one of the corners here and drag down. But you'll notice as I change the size, the image proportions get changed. And that's not what we want. So make sure to hold Shift. And you'll notice now when I move my mouse up and down, it keeps the proportions of the image the same. So I'll shrink my image down to here, and then click and drag and bring my image back, and I'll continue to hold Shift and shrink it down a bit more, and I'll go to this side, shrink it down, and now drag it down into the frame so it's centered. So my image now is about the same size as the frame. To go back to the frame, double click again in this space, outside of the circle but within the frame, and you'll notice now we're back to the blue border. So we're going to be editing the frame border now. I'll zoom back up, and I can change my frame to be a bit more narrow, and click over on the right side, and there's my image. So let's move our photo up to the top of the page. Using my arrow tool, I'll click and drag, and place the frame up the top, and I'm going to make sure that my frame goes right to the sides of the page, and you'll notice that InDesign helps you by snapping your frame to the top. So if I do it to the left, it'll snap to the left. I want to make my dog photos just a little bit more zoomed up, so I'm going to double click. And when you're changing the size of your photo within the frame, 
Just like in the middle to hold the click for a real-time view, if I click and hold on the corner and wait a second, I get a real-time view of my image stretching. So I'll make my image about that big and then change it, click and hold, and frame my dogs like that. So you can see that my image is bigger than my frame, but this is what I want it to look like within the frame. I can double click again to go back to my frame. Now at any time, if you need to reset your layout and make sure that nothing is selected using your arrow tool, click out in the safe zone, which is this kind of gray outside the objects. And you'll see that nothing is selected. So if you're ever having trouble with InDesign and something isn't working, you're trying to do a modifier or change something with a tool and it's not working correctly, make sure that you have nothing selected and then begin your steps again. So I'm happy with this dog photo, but I think I'm going to make this page my front cover page. So for now, I'm gonna move the photo off to the side and it can just wait there. And InDesign is really good for this. You can create objects, text boxes, and elements out to the side and bring them into your design at any time. But while they're out there, they're not going to be printed or shown in a final PDF. So let's draw in another frame. And this time, I'm gonna draw my frame and then use my arrow tool to adjust it so that it matches to the top corners and the bottom corners. So my frame is a full page, and now we'll place an image. File, place. This time, we'll choose the forest image and choose open. You can see again that my image is low quality, so let's right click, choose display performance and high quality display, and now my image is crisp and clear. If I double click, I can get my orange image border and I can stretch my image up. If I click and hold, and then hold shift as I constrain the proportions, you'll see that my image gets larger. I'll undo that and I'll show you an easy step. Say you're wanting to make this image fit your frame and you're not wanting to have to manually change the size like that. You can right click and select fitting and you're going to want to choose one of these two top options. Full frame proportionally, fit content proportionally. I'll choose fit content proportionally and you'll see that it fits our image within the frame. But we have all this white space on the top. So I'll try the other option. I'll right click, choose fitting, fill frame proportionally. And you notice that InDesign works out a frame size and fills the image. But you'll also notice that it hasn't stretched the image. Our image is actually much larger than the frame. And that's correct because it's kept the image proportions. I'll click and adjust this, go to the right a little bit. And if at any point you're wanting to adjust an image, but your mouse movements are too large, you can use your arrow keys, left and right, up and down, and you can get fine-tuned adjustments. I'll double click again, and now I'm back to my frame view with the blue border. Now let's add in some text. To do text, choose the T tool, keyboard shortcut T, and just like putting in an image, you have to click and drag a box, and I'll type in Aurora, and you'll notice that my text is really small. I'll zoom up. To change your text, click and drag over the text, and you'll notice automatically over here in Properties, Pages, and Libraries, a Properties tab should be highlighted. If yours isn't, click on Properties, and now you can see that you can change the character and size and all the other adjustments for text. I'm going to change this to be Georgia font. You can type in Georgia or click the drop-down box. I'll choose Georgia Bold Italic, and then I'm going to change the size, and you'll notice if I click the drop down, 72 is the largest size, but I'm wanting something a bit bigger. So I'm going to click in the point field and type in 150 and click enter. That's made my text bigger, but you'll also notice that I've lost some of my text. That's okay, it looks like a big error, but we'll fix that. So before you do anything, go up and choose your arrow tool and we'll zoom out. So first thing is our text frame is too small for the amount of text that we have. InDesign indicates this by this small red plus sign in the bottom right of your text box. So let's give some more space. So let's give InDesign some more space to put our text in. Let's click and drag this corner out. And you see there's the rest of our Aurora word. Let's shrink it back down a little bit so it fits the text a bit more. I'll move the text into the middle. And now I'd like to change this text color to be white. So you can choose your T tool and click on your text to highlight it. Or at any point with your arrow tool, you can double click and you'll automatically be transported to the T tool. I'll click and drag. And you have two options here. If your swatches tab is open, you can choose a color 
Or you can also use your Properties tab and click on the Fill button. And if you click on the Fill button, it will give you all of your swatch colors. I'd like to use white, and in InDesign, white isn't actually a color, it's just paper. And that just means when you print it, there'll be no ink. So I'll choose Paper. And if I click back once on my text, you'll see that we have white. I'm happy with that. I'll go up and click my arrow, and that resets my layout. Let's adjust this up a little bit. I think I'm going to take my font size down just a little bit. I'm going to make this 130. That's a bit better. I'll click my arrow, and now I'd like our text to be centered. An easy way to do that is to place your text box so it aligns with this margin here, and then change the right side to line up with this margin here. So now we have our text frame to be centered. Now to change our text to make it centered, double click, highlight all of your text, and over here on the right, in your Properties tab, there's a Paragraph tab, and you can choose different arrangements and alignments. We'll choose the second one, which is Align to Center. And now you can see that my text is centered. Choose your arrow tool to reset, and that's looking good. Let's add in a couple more elements. I'll add in two colored boxes. So I'll choose my Rectangle tool, which is M, click and drag a box, and I'd like to give this a pink fill. So I'll choose pink in my swatches, and now you'll notice that there's a black border. It's a very fine black border. I'll make that a bit larger. But I don't want a black border on here. So if you're choosing some swatch colors and you're wanting to have no color, you can click the None button. If I click None, you'll notice that it erases the fill. That's because my fill square is on top. So I'll re-click Pink, and now I need to click on my Stroke or Border box. Now this is on top, so now I'll be editing the Stroke or Border. Now I can click None, and you'll notice that my border disappears. I'll go back to my arrow tool, and I'm going to place my pink square down to the side here, and make it line up with the sides of the font, and now I'm going to copy and paste a second one over to the right here, and what I'd like to do is I'd like to make my rectangle be about as tall as the Aurora text. So I'm adjusting these handles on top, and you'll notice as I do this, I'm getting these small green arrows to the side of the box and it's actually giving me these guidelines. So when InDesign notices that you're changing the size of something and there might be another object over here, it might think that you want it to be the same height. And that's really helpful. Okay, so we have our image, our text, and we have our pink rectangles. Now this looks a little bit messy because we have stuff going outside of the actual layout, but in InDesign, that's totally fine. An easy way to see what your final product will look like is to push the W key, and this shows you a preview. When I push W, you notice that all of the guides disappear and it's almost as if the paper has been cut in a cutting machine. So if at any point your InDesign looks weird and you can't see any boxes or any boundaries on anything, that just might be because you've hit the W key. And an indicator is this outside area is light gray when you're in preview mode, and when you're in editing mode, it's dark gray. So I'm happy with my cover page, and it's time to add in a second page. To do that, go up to the top right, click Pages, and down at the bottom right, there's a new page. Click that button, and you'll notice that we have a fresh blank layout here. Over in the right, it shows our pages. If I had 50 pages, they would all be stacked down here. I'll undo those. If you're wanting to edit a separate page, just double click, and it will take you to that respective page. So I'll double click on page two, and we have my blank page here. I'm going to zoom out a bit, and you can see that my layout is here. And this dog photo that we worked on, I like to bring this down onto page two. So it's easy enough to just click and drag and bring it down onto page two. And when I'm on page two, I can zoom back in and I can position my dog photo to be at the top again. So transporting images and objects from pages is really easy. If you wanted to copy from one page and paste an element to another, choose the object, copy, go to your next page and paste. I'll delete that. To adjust your layout, you have sliders on the bottom here and on the right side. And if you're zoomed in a lot, instead of using these sliders, which takes a little bit of extra time, hold down the space key with your left hand and you'll notice that your mouse turns into a little hand. While that's selected, you can click and drag and move around your document. So this is really easy to zoom in, hold space and slide around. Zoom back out, hold space and move it around. So let's add in another text box. Select our Type tool, click and drag, and the text I'm going to put 
is Svalbard, S-V-A-L-B-A-R-D. And again, I'm going to change this font and size, so I'll highlight. And you'll notice that our palette over here is still set to pages. So make sure to click Properties. And here we can change all of our fonts. Again, I'll choose Georgia Bold Italic. And I'm going to change this to be 50. And the color that I'm going to use is blue. So I'll choose this blue color here. Go back to my arrow tool. My text has worked. Now let's shrink down the text frame. About there. I'm going to place my Svalbard text to be right there on the image. And I want it to be down a little bit lower, so I'm going to use my arrow keys and tap it down like that. Now I'd like to have another piece of text, so I'll copy this and paste. And this time I'm going to double click, select all and type in Norway. And I'd like this text to be black, so I'll highlight it. And I can either choose black here in my swatches or I can click the fill button and choose black here. Now using my arrow tool, I'm going to move Norway so it sits just underneath Svalbard and I'll use my arrow keys to adjust it. And now let's have a look how this will look when it's printed. So I'll push my W key for preview mode and that's looking good. W again. Let's save our document again. File, save. Now with our swatches over here, we have these colors predetermined and you can change them by double clicking on them. But say you wanted to choose a color to match an image in your design. The way to do that is to go up to Window, Color, and Color, and you get a pop out here. You notice that we have a new icon here, a little palette. In this color palette, you also have the top fill color and the border color. Let's choose a top fill color and you see that we have none selected. To choose a color, double click in this square and you'll get a color picker pop-up window. In here, you can drag the slider around to choose different colors. And you'll notice that the color you've created shows up here above what the color was. You can also put in individual RGB number values and CMYK number values if you need a specific color. You can also put in a web value color here. But to choose a color that's in this image here, click and hold on your eyedropper and then move your mouse out. And you'll notice that whatever color we go to, blue of the sky, or the red of the harness, brown of the fur, InDesign will notice what this color is and create it for you. So let's say I wanted to use the red of the harness. I release my mouse there, and we have the red of the harness there. And I can click OK, and you'll notice that we have red now on top. To save this color, click up in the top right here and choose Add to Swatches. And now when we go to our Swatches tab, you'll notice that we have a new color the red down the bottom. Say you wanted to name this color, instead of having the CMYK values, click once on the numbers and it should give you a highlighted text and I'll type in harness red. This way you can make multiple colors and use them throughout your document. So if I want to change Svalbard to be harness red, I double click on Svalbard, highlight the text and then choose harness red. And now I have the red matching. I'll go up to my arrow tool and press W and there's the difference. I'll press W again to come back to edit view and I'll choose my T tool and draw out a new text box. Now let's go to our desktop and we're going to use this blurb document here. In this document we have this first paragraph highlight that and control C or edit copy and then go back to InDesign click once in the text box and paste and your text appears. Let's highlight this text and we'll change it to be Georgia again. But we'll keep this Georgia regular. And I'll make this 15. Now you'll notice I have a hyphen here. InDesign will do this automatically, just in case you have a longer word that doesn't fit within the frame. To change that, highlight your text and go over to the right here. In this paragraph palette, you'll notice there's three small circles. Click that. And down the bottom, there's a hyphenate tick box. If you tick this on and off, it will turn hyphenation on and off. We'll keep it as off. Let's reset by clicking our arrow tool. And let's shrink down our text box to be about that wide. And I'll place this over here to the left. Now I'd like to add in a rectangle. So let's go over to our rectangle tool and drag out a rectangle. And we're going to color this in the blue here. So I'm gonna make sure I choose the fill square choose blue, 
And now I don't want this to have a border. So I'm going to click on the border box so it appears on top and click None. Then using my arrow tool, I'm going to stretch my rectangle, make sure it fits across the whole page and make it nice and narrow. But you'll notice now that our rectangle has covered up that text box that we just put in. So the way to fix that is we need to shift this to the back. So right click on your rectangle, choose Arrange, Send to Back. And you'll see now that our text has appeared over the top. And you'll notice I'm trying to select my text box here, but I can't seem to get it. That's because my rectangle is still selected and they cover around the same space. So just reset your layout by clicking over here on the right. Nothing is selected and now you're free to choose the text box. I'll shrink my text box down a little and I'll do some adjusting here. So I'm going to be choosing the rectangle, shrinking down the height, then choosing my text box again, moving it up. I'm going to use my arrows a little bit just to get it right. That looks good. Now if I press my W key, I can see what it looks like. Now I don't think I like the black text on the blue, so I'm going to change that to white. I'm going to press my W to come back to edit view, zoom in a little, double click, highlight all of my text, and I'm going to choose paper. And that looks much better. Okay, I'll zoom out a little, and I'll use my space key to give me the hand, and I'll drag down a little bit. So let's put in two text boxes here. I'll use my T tool, drag out a text box, and drag out a second one. And these don't have to be exactly the same. I've done them purposely not the same measurements so that I can show you how to edit that later. Let's go back to our document. And I'd like us to copy this whole paragraph here and copy the whole remaining text. Go back to InDesign. Click on the first text box and paste. And then click your arrow tool. Now you'll notice that we have some hyphenation here and that we have a red plus sign. So what that means is the red plus sign is indicating the InDesign is saying you've put in a lot of text, the text box isn't big enough, so the text is actually getting cut off and this is kind of like an error notification. So what we're going to do is we're going to link these two text boxes so that the extra text that can't fit can now go over into this text box. To do that, select your first text box, click once on the red plus sign, and you'll notice that your arrow changes and you can see that it has carryover text linked now to our mouse. Wherever we click this text, the new text will be carried over to. So make sure to click within your second text box. And you can see now that the text from this text box is now over here. Say I change the size of this text box and drag the top, you'll notice that the text overflows automatically. So InDesign is doing this automatically without you having to input and change anything. This can be really helpful if you change your design and put an image here and want to change this text box. It'll automatically change the text over here. Or say you have an introductory paragraph on the cover and you have find out more on page 20. You can link this text box with the text box on page 20 and they'll automatically carry over the text. So it can be really helpful. Again, we're going to change this so there's no hyphenation. So I'll double click in this text box. Dragging and highlighting between join text boxes can be tricky. So I recommend you choose Control A on PC or Command A on Mac. And that will select all the text in the linked boxes. Over here to paragraph, Make sure you click these three dots and bring down the hyphenate option. And we'll turn that off. And now while we're here, I'd like this to be justified to either sides of the text boxes. So here's our options for justification. And we're going to choose the fourth one over. So that's full justification and leaving a space on the last line. Let's go to our arrow tool. And our text is now stretched to fit our text boxes. Now I can manually change these text boxes and try and get them to be about the same size, but it's a little bit tricky to get them centered. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in some extra guides. Go up to Layout, choose Margins and Columns, and here we can change our columns. You can see that right now we currently have one column. Let's make that two, and you'll notice down the bottom here that it gives us a live preview. So if I choose three columns, now we have three. You can even go up to four. So let's go down to two. And now we have two columns with these new guides. But this gap between the columns isn't very wide. So I'm going to change the gutter. And gutter is the gap between these columns. And I'll make this 15, 15 millimeters. And I'll choose OK. So now you see that I have these two purple margins. Now I can click and drag and drag out my text frames to match these margins. And InDesign should automatically have you snap to these margins. And for the top, 
when I drag this text box top up, it'll automatically snap to the other text box. So that's really helpful. Let's change our text size by double clicking, Control A or Command A, and we'll change this to be 15 font as well. And I'll choose my arrow tool. I'll zoom out to have a look and press W. Okay, that's looking good. So let's add in an image, but this time we're going to add in a circle image. So you'll notice in our text frame tool, there's a small white arrow. And whenever you see a small white arrow on the toolbar, that means if you click and hold, InDesign will give you options for that tool. So we'll click and hold on our rectangle frame tool, and we're going to choose ellipse frame tool. So this is how you draw ovals and circles. And we're going to do this over here on the left side of the page to give ourselves some space. You click and drag, you'll notice again that the circle isn't automatically a perfect circle. So you need to hold down shift, draw your circle, and then release. And I'll zoom up and go over to this circle. Before we do anything, choose your arrow tool, make sure your frame is selected so you have these white squares on the border, and now we'll choose File, Place. The third image is the tent image. So choose that and click Open. And you'll notice that our tent image is really big. It's also pixelated, so let's right click, choose Display Performance, High Quality Display, and now our photo is looking better. If I click and hold in the middle, you can see that our image is huge compared to the circular frame. So I could arrange my image to be like that. If you wanted to manually change the image, remember you can double click in any of this space outside of this inner circle and you get the image orange border. It's a really large image so I'd have to zoom out a lot and I could drag in a corner and hold down shift and shrink my image and then zoom back in. But remember we can do this really quickly by right clicking and choosing fitting Fill frame proportionally. So you notice that InDesign has fit the image to be just perfectly on the top and bottom of the circle. So I can actually change my image and frame it like that. And you'll notice if I move my image up too high, there's a bit of the image that gets cut out here. So if I move my image over to the page, you'll notice that there's a white cutout. So that's something you want to watch for. Make sure that your image doesn't actually go too much smaller than the frame, otherwise it will look cut. So I'd like to zoom up a little bit on my tent so I double click and make sure I have my orange chosen. I'll hold shift when I'm dragging a corner, drag up my image, and then I'm going to go back to the middle and move my image. So we have a little bit of the sky and the orange tent down here. Now I'll double click again, and now I'm back to the frame blue border. So let's zoom out, and I'll drag this over, and we're going to place this over this section here. But you'll notice that my image is a little bit too large. So the option that we would normally do is we'd shrink down our frame and then we'd have to double click and now shrink down our image. And then move our image again by double clicking and repositioning it. I'll undo that and that was multiple steps and that can take a bit too much time. So there's another tool that can help you. If you go over to the left, the free transform tool, which is E on the keyboard shortcuts. Now when I go to my frame, if I go to a corner, hold shift and shrink, You'll notice that it shrinks the frame and the image together. It keeps them together as one element. So I'll make my image about that big. You can also move your objects around with the free transform tool, just like using the arrow tool. So I'll place my image about there. And I'm happy with that, so I'll go back to my arrow tool, click over in the safe area, and press W. And I like how this looks, but I don't like how this blue rectangle extends past the circle here. So I'll push W again, I'll select my blue rectangle, and if I zoom up, you'll notice that I have these three white handles. The one I'm going to use is the one in the middle, and this will allow me to drag the width of the rectangle. And I'll move this so that it's underneath the circle like that. Then if I zoom back out and press W, it neatens up my design nicely, and the blue rectangle gets cut off by the circle. Okay, let's save our document again. File, save. So let's have a look at our document. If I click on pages, you can see that we have our first page and our second page. If I zoom out, you can see both of them there. So we're going to do one more thing. Say this was a book and we wanted to add some page numbers. One way you could do this is by manually going in, putting in a text box and putting in page number two. Like that. And we have a page number down there. But that would mean you'd have to manually put in a text number for each page in your book. And if you needed to change a section and move it to the beginning or later in the book, that means you'd have to manually go in and edit every page number, and that's way too time consuming. So I'll delete that, and I'm going to show you how to do this easily. If you click up on your Pages tab, 
you'll notice we have these three blank page icons here. The one we're going to use is A Master. And now if you don't have two blank pages, click up to the top right here and choose New Master and make sure there's two pages selected and click OK and you should get a new master. If you have two pages of A Master now, double click on one of these pages and you'll notice that you get a view of these two blank pages. Now this will seem like all of your work has been deleted. That's okay, it's all still down here and you can double click on these pages to go back to your work. So double click on A Master and I'm going to close my swatches tab by hitting this button. And now at these page, this is where we're going to place our page numbers. So choose the T tool, let's drag a box out. And now using the arrow tool, let's make this text box go down to the bottom of the page. About there. Now double click in this text box and you'll notice that you get the cursor in the top left. Now to insert a page number, right click in this text box, choose insert special character, markers, current page number. And you'll notice that we get a capital A. Now this will seem like a mistake, but this is a representation of a bit of coding in InDesign and wherever this A appears on the page, InDesign will automatically choose the correct page number for that page. So I'd like this to be centered. So let's drag over and highlight over that A, choose our properties palette and go to paragraph and we're going to choose a line to center. And you'll see that our A now is over in the center. Let's choose our arrow tool. And I'd like to copy this and paste it onto the second page. And I'm going to place this down the bottom as well so that both pages match. Now let's go up to our pages and now let's click back on our page number two with the dog photo. And you'll notice that there's a page number two there automatically. If I double click back on A Master, what this shows is the A Master is almost like a background or the DNA of your document. Anything that you put in here will appear on subsequent pages that you put in automatically. So if I put in more pages, you'll notice these pages all have page numbers. Six and seven, four and five, two and three. But you'll notice now that my page number two, it's a little bit high. But if I double click on it or try and select it, I can't choose this text box. That's because A Master locks these elements to just be on the master pages. So let's change the height of our page number. Double click on A Master. I'll choose my text box and I'll move it down and I'll move the second one down. So they're a lot lower. Now if I go back to page two, there we go, my page number is lower and that looks really good. Say I went to my A master, I could double click in this text box and then start to type holiday travel brochure 2019. If I go back to my page two, you'll notice that that automatically updates. If I go back to A Master, I could use my arrow tool and choose this text box and let's rotate it. I'm going to go to the outside, get the curved arrow, and I'm going to hold shift. And when you hold shift, it forces the rotation to go in 45 degree increments. About there. And I'll drag this up, use my arrow keys, go left and right. And now I'll click on page two. And you'll notice now that my page number is on the side. You can be creative. You can put detailed footers or different headers for your document or put your page numbers up along the side here and have extra documents. You could also place a logo on your A Master page and that logo would appear on every single page in your document. So A Master can be really helpful for doing small details that you'd like to appear automatically on every page in your document. The free transform tool is also useful for text boxes. Say I wanted to make my Svalbard text larger. Instead of double clicking and changing the font size, I could use my free transform tool, click and hold and then hold shift and now I can change and get a real time view of my font size getting larger, like that. What you can also do is use your arrow tool. And if you want to choose Svalbard and Norway, both text boxes, hold down shift, click again, and you'll notice that both are selected. Now I can go to my free transform tool. And if I drag out the corner here and hold shift, you'll notice that I can change the size of both of them at the same time. That goes further in InDesign. If you choose your arrow tool, you can choose multiple objects by holding down shift and it gives you a group box. Now if I click and hold, I can move these around together as a group. Using your arrow tool, you can go out to the side here, click and drag a bounding box 
and anything that appears within this box will now be selected. And you can move them around. So this can be helpful to save you moving individual items around in your document. So our document is ready to be PDF'd. Let's do one final save, file save. To export your file, click File Export. And I'll change my file name to be Aurora Brochure, and we're going to call this Print. This is the print version. Make sure it's saved in your main folder. Click Save. And now we have some options for our PDF. You'll notice at the top here we have Adobe PDF Preset. Click that and you'll get a drop down. The first one we'll choose is High Quality Print. High quality means all of the images will be maximum quality, so if you print this out, everything will be detailed. One of the settings you can change is pages to be all or range. We're going to do all of our pages, one and two, but if you had a book that was say 100 pages long and you just wanted to send one section to an editor, you can click range, choose the pages, or type in the numbers 20 to 35, and it would only PDF those pages, so that can be helpful. We're going to click all and choose export and it should be very fast. If you get a pop-up, you can hit close. Now let's go back to our folders, and you'll notice that we have Aurora Brochure Print. If I double click on that, and we have our PDF here, I'll zoom out a little bit. There's our first page and our second page, and this is where it's helpful to check all of your colors and your text and all of your elements, make sure nothing's getting cut off or is missing, or if there's any edits you need to do. You can also zoom up and check out the quality of your PDF. So here you can see the forest photo and the dog photo are really crisp and detailed, so that's worked well. I'll leave that open for now, and I'll go back to InDesign. So now let's export it at lower quality. Let's go File, Export, and this time I'm going to call it Aurora Brochure Small. Make sure to save it in your main folder. Click Save, and now we're going to change the preset to be Smallest File Size. With InDesign, when you change your settings in PDF, smallest file size with InDesign usually only relates to how it processes the images, whether or not it does those at low quality or high quality. All of the text boxes and even shapes that we've drawn, like this blue rectangle, those are all drawn live when you view the PDF, so they'll always be perfect resolution. It only relates to the images that you put into your design. Let's click Export. And now go check out how that worked. Aurora brochure small, and I'll open that. Everything looks really good, but you'll notice if I zoom up on my dogs, the first one is nice and crisp and detailed, but this one you can notice that some pixelation has appeared around the outside of the dog photos. If you zoom out and have it to be about realistic size, you can't really notice the difference, it looks okay. But if you zoom in, you'll notice that there's pixelation. So you'd think this would be terrible, but if we go back to our documents, the first one that we did versus the second one that we did, there's a big difference in the file size. The first one is 814 kilobytes, the next one is 189. So this is about one quarter the size of this document here. For our two page brochure, this doesn't really matter, but if you had a 50 page book full of images, that could be the difference of 500 megabytes versus 15 megabytes. So say you wanted to send a draft version to somebody, Sending them a small version might be good in the interim, and then you can print it out using this print version at the end. If you've done a print version of your PDF and your print version looks like this, this means it's not the fault of the conversion to the print setting, it actually means your original image is low quality. So double check that in your PDFs at the end and make sure that they're high quality. You may have to search for new images that are higher resolution. So I recommend if you're doing any printing of any design to always use the print setting in your PDF and double check that your images look nice. Another way that InDesign helps you is, let's say if I change this text box to be a little bit smaller, and you'll see that I get the red plus sign. So this is warning me that there's a lot of text that doesn't fit within this text box. You'll notice down the bottom here, we have one error. And if I double click on this, it shows me the error, and I can hit the drop down, overset text. Overset means the text now is over this text box's limitations. So if you have a red circle down here, it pays to check and make sure that you don't have any overset text. I'm going to change this text box back down so there's room, and you'll notice that my errors are now green and they're safe to go. So we'll save this one more time, File Save, and I'll hide InDesign. So one note on file management with InDesign. This InDesign file here is only 1.8 megabytes, so it's really small. 
Say if we did this brochure in Photoshop, we'd have all of these as different layers, and your Photoshop file might be about 200 megabytes. But this is only 1.8 megabytes. And what that shows is InDesign works really quickly because it doesn't actually have these images embedded in. It's only referencing them. And so this whole folder here that has all of my documents in it, if you're wanting to work on this InDesign brochure on another computer, make sure you copy and drag this whole folder onto an external or USB drive so that you have all of these elements in here. If for some reason you take the InDesign file and just move that, so if you open up just this InDesign file, InDesign will show some errors and it will say, where's the dog photo? Where's the forest photo and the tent photo? And you won't be able to make a high quality version of your PDF. You'll only be able to make a very low quality. So that's something to keep in mind. Make sure that your InDesign file stays with the assets that you use for the file. With InDesign, there's a lot of tiny features that you can find out how to use. So if you need something specific with InDesign, I recommend looking up an online tutorial on YouTube or on lynda.com to find your answer.